Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about data-driven user interfaces with Sutil. All right, so you probably never heard of Sutil and that's kind of normal. This is a brand new uh, open source library to run data-driven front-end applications that are very reactive. So I said a bunch of buzzwords here, but this video is here to explain what it is and why I believe it's very relevant and can be the future of F-sharp web uh, front-ends. So let's take a step back and look at what, what's currently in the ecosystem right now. So in F-sharp, if you're writing front-end applications, you're most of the time going to be writing React applications. So with Fable React, Felice, uh, even the Elmish, like Elmish is uh, bind, bound a little bit to uh, Fable React. And so most of the time you're gonna be leveraging React and what's happening underneath is when your view changes, right? And there's a change, it actually checks with the virtual DOM, it checks everywhere where the code might have changed and does diffs everywhere and only re-renders the parts which have changed, right? So there's this massive checking process that occurs everywhere and only the new changes get pushed to the real DOM. Right. So if we take a step back, what DOM means is a document object model. It's, it's the page that it's getting presented to the user and a virtual DOM is kind of like a, uh, a diffing algorithm. So a, a, differenti a differentiating algorithm where you get past the newest version of the page that get, just got changed and you check what has changed since the old version and then it selects a, you know, the, the things that have to change and then re-renders only the parts that have changed. So this was actually a massive step forward between re-rendering the whole page all the time and now we're only rendering what has changed. But what, uh, so in the JavaScript community, a framework that is up and coming is called Svelte. And what Svelte, how that is improving over the other frameworks is it goes a step further and does not diff on things that have not changed. And how it works is much like an Express uh, spreadsheet. So let's say you have a, a cell, so A1, and based on whatever A1's value is, you have another cell that is dependent on A1, so let's say B1, and it does, let's say, plus one to the value of A1. So let's say in my A1 cell, it has one as a value, so my B1 cell has two. And if I change my B1 cell to 10, then it automatically propagates the changes to my B1 cell, which now will become 11 or something like that. And so why do you care about this? Well, this is a massive improvement of firstly performance because you don't have to do to recheck all the virtual DOM in order to push your changes to the real DOM. Now, how does Svelte solve this problem? It solves the problem by explicitly defining a data point which is observable and whatever is dependent on that observable data. And so this is called binding uh, in that context. So we're binding a, an observable value to a, a subscriber, if you will. So this is exactly like the observable pattern, right? So the observable pattern is a pattern that is present in all, like most programming languages, like a publisher subscriber model. And in C-sharp, we have the iObservable interface. So it's super stable. It's been like in, in practice for a long time. And what Sutil does is it uses this observable pattern to create UIs. So how it will work is, uh, there's many ways it can work, but it can work with the MVU uh, design pattern, which is model view at date. So you have a model which is data. So it's straight data. There's, no, there's nothing involving observables in this model. So you have a counter. It's just going to be a record with a counter of int. You have an update function, which takes a a model like privacy stated and takes it an incoming message. So a message is a message that is sent from the view or from, let's say if you have a web sockets, it can be a message that comes from a command, which we'll get into what a command is. And what it will do is given the current state of the application and the incoming message, you will get a new model and other messages potentially in the form of commands. So a command is, a, an issuing uh, of, of work that may result in more commands or not, sorry, or more uh, messages or not. 
So it's kind of a message loop. And you have a view function, and this view function is different from other MVU patterns like Elmish. So in traditional MVU patterns like Elmish, the view function takes a model and a dispatching function, and we'll render the view based on the current state of the model, and uh, the dispatching function, uh, function can be passed to like buttons or other UI elements that may trigger changes to the model. So that's the way that it changes the model from the UI. But what's different in Sutil is the render, the, the, sorry, the view function only gets rendered once. So that's kind of firstly incredible. The, the view function gets rendered once and how it works is the observables I was mentioning uh, get created with what's called uh, stores. So a store is a, it's kind of a cell like an Excel. Yeah, you give it an initial data point, you give and it returns to you an observable of that data type. So for example, if you pass, if you do like store.make store and you give it a type model, it will return a, an I observable of model and a dispatching function. So this dispatching function is how you're going to route new messages to the update function of that store, right? So it's much like Excel, where a store is basically like a cell value in Excel. So there's two operations you can do on the store. You can attach to it and based on whatever data it has and, will, and how it changes, you can give it a, a piece of data. In this case, it will most likely be a view. So it'll be an HTML view. So you can pass it a div, a custom div or whatever. And the other thing that you can do with it is it can change the value of the observable. So let's say I have a counter and I want to update the counter. I can do, uh, I can transact on the store and say, hey, your new value is, you know, plus one or whatever. And what that will do is it will emit to all the dependents of that observable and they can take a decision on whether they want to re-render their view. So, it's very similar to React, but it's also completely different because that view function only gets rendered once and will not change. And the only thing, uh, and the parts that can change are explicitly defined in the code with uh, binding statements. This makes it so there is a bit more boilerplate in the code, right? So that's kind of the trade-off. With React, you have a static looking uh, view function and it's obviously not static but depending like giving a model so given a, a model parameter when it renders it looks pretty static and the the the, the trade-off is that re uh, that view function gets called many many times every on every update is going to get recalled it's going to generate a new view and with that new view that's generated there's going to be hey what changed like that there's going to be a virtual DOM comparison between the old view and the new view and it's going to say, hey, which parts changed? And then the parts that changed are going to get rendered to the, uh, the DOM, the real DOM. And in our case, what's happening is the views getting rendered once, but there are observable cells and an update function. And when we change that update function, it, it uh, notifies all dependents of an observable and say, hey, this thing changed, so you got to re-render. That will re-render the parts where it needs to re-render. And so I kind of went into depth there. Maybe it's difficult to know how this is better, if this is better or not, because let's let's face it, this is an alpha. This is this is the most alpha of alpha of versions. It's like version 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 or something like that. It's very new, and I'm just taking a risk and trying it out because I think it has a lot of value and I think future web applications might leverage this for extra performance and to remove the dependency on React. Like we have a great opportunity here to have a library to build F-sharp native web applications transpiled to JavaScript without needing to have a JavaScript framework supported under us, right? And that's gonna be critical, I think. Firstly, to remove dependencies on the JavaScript, but it gives us an opportunity to do even better than whatever we're leveraging underneath. And so that's kind of very exciting to me. So too long, didn't watch. Basically what I want to say is that Sutil is a new way to write front-end applications based on a reactive programming or data-driven program paradigm. 
and it's you know it's very out uh, it's in an alpha stage so it's very early recently created don't go writing production web applications with it just yet but if you want to tinker around and maybe contribute to it i think it's it might be the next step in the f sharp web game and i think it can really change the game i think this can actually be like a killer app right so in ruby it's like ruby on rails there's uh, you know, Django and Python or whatever, but I think this can actually make a big difference in web development. And obviously, we're far from there. Like we're very far from there. Uh, you know, I talked to uh, David Hawkins, uh, who who is the one who's writing this with, uh, I believe, Alfonso from the Fable compiler. And uh, you know, there's still like there's still a lot to go. There's still a lot of refinement. You know, I feel there's a lot of boilerplate to begin with, but you know. <laughs> Like the, we have to handle the expectations. This is a super recent library. And I'm just here because I think it will be a great addition to my stock monitoring system because I want to be updating the front end constantly, make it really cool. And so I'm going to start writing code in the next video because I think uh, just having a full video on hands-on will be better than just combining an expl explanation and whatever. So, Hopefully you enjoyed this explanation of what Sutil is and hopefully you're kind of excited for it and uh, make sure you get involved if you want. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave me a like. It really helps me out and comment down below. That also really helps the algorithm and subscribe for more videos. Uh, next video, we're going to be having a hands-on uh, writing and a web interface with Sutil and Bulma. So I uh, hope you're excited for that. If you're interested in freelance F sharp development and consulting, you can check out my website to con contact me down below. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video. Peace.